Hi everyone, I am Kyle Cordes at Oasis Digital and today I'm going to show an example of data flow with observables using Angular 2 Alpha 45 Plus. I'll describe why I say plus in a few minutes. By means of orientation, this is me. My website has some Angular content on it, although most recently it's just a problem I hit and fixed back with Alpha 38. This is where I work, Oasis Digital. I'm the founder of the company some years ago, and I still work on our Angular Bootcamp class. So some of my work out nowadays is teaching people to use Angular. A couple weeks ago, there was a conference called Angular Connect in London. It was the official European Angular conference for the fall of 2015. I unfortunately was unable to go, although uh, we had someone there and he said it was fantastic. A talk which was one of the most discussed talks in that conference was this Angular 2 data flow talk. Uh, it's worth watching the whole thing, but especially from minutes about 5 to 14 are especially valuable. Uh, he goes through a type ahead using classical style and an Angular 2 style using RxJS and observables. Unfortunately, as of when this talk was made, the alpha that was shipping didn't actually work for this feature. Uh, Right before Angular Connect, the Angular Core team had switched from ReactiveX RxJS version 4 to what's called RxNext, which is ReactiveX RxJS version 5, and that broke a bunch of stuff. Uh, I managed to get it working and used it in an Angular 2 early start class that we taught this week. So I'm going to show how that works and explain the code behind it. Right here is an example of the working application. Uh, I implemented this as an incremental search instead of as a stock ticker search just because it seemed a little bit more fun. I used the Reddit API for the PIX subreddit and you can just sort of incrementally type here so like CA and it finds some images for you. We just show the, the thumbnails if they exist. And of course, the most obvious thing to search for on, on Reddit is a cat, okay? But you'll notice as I type letters, it doesn't immediately search. It waits till I stop typing. So it's using the exact same uh, debounce mechanism that was shown in the Angular Connect talk. It does all the sort of things you would expect, right? So let's maybe search for a car, see a bunch of car images. So this is not really interesting. The inter interesting point is how it works. So let's look at that. Uh, it consists of only three files, and I'll explain those files now. We have an index file that does all the sort of usual things. Uh, as I look at this, I notice that, you know, really in, in most of our example code, we recommend loading the JavaScript at the end of the body as your default. So I'm going to go ahead and move it down there live during this recording. Hopefully I didn't break anything. Uh, the most important comment is the one right here in the middle. Alpha 45 is still broken, but as of, like, as of right now, as I write this, beginning in November 2015, the, team, the Core Angular team has already fixed this problem in master. They have made this code work in master of Angular 2, uh, but I don't know when the next alpha is going to come out, and I didn't want to wait for it, so I just uh, you know, pulled it from GitHub and, and did a build, and I am using files that I performed using that build. By means of explanation, this minimal lib, this is just part of the materials we use during class so that our students don't have to go set up a complex environment. We sort of hand them a zip file to get them off the ground real easily and includes this minimal set of libs. Uh, everything in here should be familiar if you've been working with Angular 2, so I'm gonna skip on to the good stuff. For the template, uh, it's a fairly straightforward use of Angular 2 features, so I, I went ahead and used the form instead of only a free-floating control. Uh, ng4 model binds to the form, ng control tells this input which, or tells Angular which input to use with this control. And so this is the control that I'm typing in when I type right here. So that, there's only one text box and there it is. And then to show the results, I wanted the results to sort of stack up in columns here. So I just did a little bit of inline CSS and an inline style element and then did a, um, an, in an ng4, I keep thinking ng repeat, but I did an ng4 uh, and iterated over the results and I piped the results to the async pipe. So this is that super important pipe that was described in that Angular Connect talk. On the input side, this pipe takes an observable and then as that observable changes, it returns the, re, you know, the current value of the observable. Uh, 
One bit here, this reminds me a lot of some features that were present in the very early versions of Angular 1, when you could directly put a promise on the scope and then bind to it. It seems like maybe some of those ideas have come back in the form of this async pipe. I think this is a fantastic feature that a lot of great stuff is gonna be built on. Uh, the only complexity here is that there are occasionally Reddit search results, even in the pics subreddit, where there is, for whatever reason, not a thumbnail available. Seems like a strange thing, but uh, I just went ahead and let the text display in that situation. We'll see how that works in the code. So again, this is a very simple template, nothing interesting going here. All the exciting stuff is over here in the code. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain how all this code works. Uh, if you've watched the Angular Connect talk, if you watch this talk right here, then they probably did a much better job than I did explaining it. But nonetheless, I have running code, so I'll take that. Okay, first we, we import all the usual stuff from Angular 2. Uh, I wanted to get observable so I could type my results. As far as I've been able to determine, currently this is how you have to get a hold of observable. So I'm really hoping that either some code I haven't seen yet or some code I'm coming soon will re-export this observable from Angular 2 uh, to make it easier to get a hold of that type. Types are a lot more important than they used to be now that we have TypeScript in hand. So uh, I'd really like to get that without having to dig down this deep path. Uh, okay, next, this is a fairly ordinary Angular component. It's using fairly ordinary features all the way through, except for this async pipe. So that async pipe is this word async. Uh, this is just ordinary Angular form use. So we have a form, which is really a control group, and then we have a specific field in that form declared right here. We, uh, we, we put it, I guess, what do you say? we say on the component now or on the controller. It's not really on the scope because the scope has that big tombstone we saw a year ago in the fall. Um, in Angular 1, promises were pervasive. It appears to me that in Angular 2, observables are pervasive. Uh, this search field, which is one of these controls, I don't even have to ask it to have an observable. It just has an observable called value changes. That, that's really convenient. I notice that's not a function call. So you're not like doing something to tell it to go create an observable. It just already has one. I haven't studied the source code around this property yet, but I wonder if this is actually used internally in the, in the implementation or if it's here only for me. Uh, if I run this code with these lines uncommented, I can see the results of the debounce. So I can see this uh, line 30. I can see this emit something to the console every time I type a single letter. And then every time I pause typing for a half a second, I can see the second one emit to the, to the console. Uh, switch map. This was maybe not, not explained quite as well as I would have liked in that talk. Switch map is a fairly powerful operator provided by RxJS. Its meaning is... Uh, observe the observable it's hanging off of, and then when that changes, run this function. This function is expected to return another observable. So in that sense, it's just like map. But what the switch means is that when it switches from one to the other, it sends a signal to the previous observable to tell it to cancel. Now, I haven't studied exactly how this code is wired up, how much hand-holding uh, was needed or whether that just sort of fell out automatically from using rx observables but that is the intended practical result here is that without doing really any extra effort each time we switch to a different search if we had another search still running we would send a cancel signal and that would flow back through the observable that was returned by this search reddit picks function okay search reddit picks this is straightforward this part is very similar to what you saw in the angular 2 talk bit or the angular connect talk video uh, I combined the base URL with a search string in the most primitive possible ways. Uh, the reason I chose to use the Reddit API is first that I know it has cat pictures and the internet of course always needs cat pictures in a good demo. But secondly, the Reddit API, unlike almost every other API out there, always serves totally open cores headers. So I didn't have to jump through any hoops to make this work. I didn't have to think about proxying it or, or any other kind of configuration. I would really appreciate it if a lot more API providers would deploy cores headers. That would help, that would make it a lot easier to write code that uses those services from a browser. Okay, the next, uh, this.http is simply the HTTP service, do we still call it a service? That was captured up here, it was injected 
I guess we could spot where it was injected. That doesn't matter. Um, get runs a get request. And then this uh, function that takes a result and calls JSON on it, this is just part of the API of HTTP. And I, I think this might actually be similar to or even using the fetch API. I, I'm not really sure. But this is somewhat different than what we had in Angular 1. You, you have to actually ask it to be interpreted as JSON. And just to clarify what this means, this does not mean give me the JSON. This means interpret the response as JSON, parse it, and give me back the JavaScript object. So that's what happens right here. And then this next map means pipe those results through this translate function. Now the details of this translate function I'm going to try to avoid talking about. The, they are messy because the shape of the data returned by the Reddit API for search results is kind of messy. And you have to kind of walk through it and see. Sometimes the thumbnail is a URL and sometimes it's not. So if it's not a URL, we just return the title instead. Uh, it seems sort of ugly to me to have an API that has a field that sometimes contains a URL and sometimes it doesn't. But again, it's free, it's fun, and it has cores headers. So I used it even though it's maybe not the most beautiful URL in the world. Now the great point is, I am done. This part at the bottom was dealing with the mess a API, so what you see right here, including a couple of lines I could have, like I could have got by without that line, I could easily get by without the comments. This is just an incredibly concise and powerful representation of how to do an incremental search with all the features you want an incremental search to have. I am, uh, I'm, just, I'm just super impressed by where they're going with Angular 2 and these capabilities are put inside. I think that it is a surprisingly ambitious framework and I, I'm really looking forward to building things at scale. So far we're building small and medium sized things, but I think this is going to be fantastic to build at scale. Okay, so one more demo before I wind up here. We have a search. We can type a couple of letters and it doesn't search all the way in between here. In fact, let's just We'll make it that we can see that happen. We'll get the console up. Actually, I'm trying to find a way to make it visible. Okay, this will work. So I have the network tab up. I refresh the thing. You see it load all the code and don't all those the requests for the loading don't really matter. We'll clear those out. We'll type in, I'm gonna type cat real fast. You see it did not search for C or C A. It searched for C A T only when that was steady for a half second. And then of course we have all the requests to retrieve the thumbnails. There's, I didn't do anything that deals with that. And if this remains fully operational, you can edit it and after a half second, the right, you know, all the sort of things will happen. So I misspelled kitten. I guess you don't have any search results of the misspelled kitten. And now I correctly spelled kitten and we get search results. Okay, so this concludes my demo. Hopefully everyone watching has enjoyed it. Uh, I don't see exactly how long I've gone, but hopefully uh, it was worth the watch. Uh, good luck with Angular 2, and if you need any help adopting it or learning it, please consider our Angular Bootcamp. Thanks.